Hello, Assalamu alaikum and good morning everyone. Welcome to the Citrix 2020 and 22. Myself, Mohamed Hayadid Islam and today I am going to present an intelligent system for hearing deficiency diagnosis using EG-based AP signal, CWT and improved vision 16 pipeline. The co-inventors are Dr. Norijam bin Sulaiman, Dr. Mahapuja Binti Mustafa, Mamun Roshid and Dr. Moab Shaul bin Jedi. Let's begin. This is our outline. Our outline contains the background of our study, problem statement, objective of our findings, methodology, result and discussion, and conclusion. Let's look at the background of my research. As people move through in their daily living activities, basic auditory abilities play a vital role for their communication and their learning capabilities. But the World Health Organization who report that 466 million people are living with the hearing loss in 2018 and projected to exceed 630 million by the year of 2030 and more than 900 million by the year of 2050. One of the best way to meet this vast population concern is to use the brain computer interface which link the human brain to the external technology. The various hearing impairment testing technique have been conducted to address this issue and among them EEG based auditory evoke potential are most widely used for hearing uh, disorder diagnosis. The feature extraction and classification approach act as a most vital role in AP based BCI system. There are some basic problems that I found when I am trying to implement this analysis. The conventional hearing disorder uh, diagnosis technique are time consuming since most of the approach select a long decision window. Among the wide range of feature extraction method, it's very challenging to figure out the most effective approach. To classify the extracted feature, the researcher have developed different type of machine learning and deep learning technique. But determining the most appropriate approach to classify the AP signal remains challenging. For EEG based AP classification, a massive amount of training, training trials are needed from the targeted user, but a few data sets are available that could be used for building the hearing loss diagnosis system. The main objective of this study is to build an intelligent system for hearing deficiency diagnosis. To meet this objective, the sub-objective are to investigate the EEG features that are related to the human hearing disorder, to develop a hearing disorder recognition model using the deep learning technique, to conduct a performance analysis on the model using AP dataset. This is the flowchart of our complete methodology. The first and most important phase is subject selection. Then the next part is equipment setup. Based on the subject and the equipment, we develop the data acquisition protocol which able to generate the AP data set. If the subject are able to generate the AP data set, then we will go for the data collection. As AP data set come from the brain area and sometimes it produces the noisy data because of the muscle movement, data preprocessing and filtering plays a vital role to collect the qualitative data from the raw AP signal. In order to train and test the model, we split the data set into training set and the testing set. Then the next important phase is uh, feature extraction method. There are several types of feature extraction method are widely used by the researcher. These are time domain, frequency domain and the time frequency domain feature extraction method. In order to train the deep learning model, we use the training data set and test the performance of the model using the testing data set. If the performance did not meet the satisfactory level, then we'll uh, change the classifier parameter or change the classifier. And if the performance meet the satisfactory level, then we uh, analyze the model performance. This figure shows the data acquisition procedure. First, we select the subject. Then we select the suitable equipment from which we can collect the AP data set. In this study, we have used the five channel emotive insight uh, device. Then we connect the device with computer using the Emotive Pro software via Bluetooth. During the data collection, we check the conduct quality and if the conduct quality is less than 100%, then we use the conductive gel which helps to increase the conduct quality between the skin and the sensor. Finally, we record and export the AP dataset. In this study, uh, the electrode were placed at F3, F4, T7 and T8 following the international 1020 system. From each subject, we collect the multiple trial. And each trial contains the data of 40 seconds. From each trial, we cut the first 5 second uh, data and achieve the 35 second data. 
The sampling frequency of this device is 128 Hz. Based on the sampling frequency, we segmented the data set into two decision window, one second and two second. Each subject are provided 60 to 80 decibel auditory stimulus through the headphone. This figure shows the transformation process from time domain signal to time frequency domain image using CWT. In this study, we have used the mother wavelet and it has the two properties. First one is scaling property and the second one is shifting property. Based on this property, we collect the coefficient to build the time frequency image. As in this study, we have used the 5 channel emotive inside device. We first converted the raw AP data into time frequency image using the CWT. Then we concatenate the 5 channel time frequency images for preparing an observation. So each observation provides the time frequency information of 5 channel. This figure shows the architecture of the proposed improved VG16 model. It consists of input layer, multiple convolution layer, max pooling layer, multiple dense layer, and the fully connected layer. The convolution operation provides the more advanced feature representation. The several fixed size filter allows the complex function to be used in the input image. The same weight and the same bias value are used in the whole image in each filter. The pooling method is used in the feature map which have gone through the convolution and the activation function. The dropout layer is used to prevent the overfitting problem, whereas the fully connected layer is used to classify the time frequency image. This table illustrates the proposed architecture building and training procedure. In the first step, we load the base VG16 model with the pretend weight, and in the second step, we freeze some layer in the base VG16 model. The red dotted area of this figure shows the working of step 2. In this area, the weight will not update with the time frequency image. This area just transfer their weight to the next layer. In the third step, we create the model by replacing some layer of VG16 model with the new layer and retain this layer. The blue dotted area show the working of step 3. In this area, the weight will update with the time frequency image. In this area, we also change some layer of base VG16 model. Here I use the multiple dense and the dropout layer. The reason behind uh, adding the dropout layer is to prevent the overfitting problem. There are several key benefits of the proposed architecture. The proposed architecture provides the faster training process since it uses the less parameter than the base VG16 model. We also change some higher level parameter and fit the, our data set with the proposed architecture. This architecture achieved the state of art performance with the concise decision window. In this study, we have also designed a graphical user interface. The purpose of creating this interface is for making the system easier for the user and a user can easily handle this system. Here, to show the model performance, we shuffle the data set, testing data set in a manner that if we put the odd number, then it calls the unlabeled data when the subject is able to hear the auditory stimulus. And if we put the even number, then it calls the unlabeled data when the subject cannot able to hear the auditory stimulus. The graphical user interface also shows the raw AP signal, the time frequency image, and the overall performance and the hearing condition. The first figure show the time frequency image of 5 channel and the next figure illustrate the overall accuracy and the loss cap of the proposed VG16 model. This model has been trained using the 50 epoch with the batch size 64 and the learning rate was set to 0.0001. The first figure show the comparison between the base VG16 model and the improved VG16 model. To show the effectiveness of the improved VG16 model, we calculate the different performance evaluation technique. From this figure, we can see that our improved VG16 model achieved the much better result with the time frequency AP signal. From the confusion matrix, we can see that among the 899 observation, only one observation has been misclassified. To show the effectiveness of the proposed improved VG16 model, we also conduct the different experimental analysis. In the first experimental analysis, we have used the 10 different type of uh, feature extraction method with the KNN classifier. 
in the second experiment analysis we have used the time frequency CWT image with the simple CNN architecture and in the third experiment analysis we have used the CWT image with the proposed improved V16 model. From this table we can see that our proposed architecture achieved 2.09% improvement in accuracy, 2.42% in precision, 1.53% in recall, 1.98% in F1 score and 4.41% in Kohan Kappa score than the first experiment analysis. And the proposed architecture achieved 0.26% improvement in accuracy, 0.25% uh, in precision, 0.33% in recall, 0.29% in F1 score and 1.59% in coherent Kappa score than the second experiment analysis. Hearing loss is the most prevalent sensory disability in the world and it's impeding the human communication and their learning capabilities. So a reliable and effective hearing test is essential for addressing this issue from the earlier stage. In this study, several experiments have been conducted to figure out the most appropriate approach for hearing deficiency diagnosis. The experimental analysis has conducted with the experimental data set where the proposed architecture achieved a maximum of 99.89% testing accuracy. We also develop a graphical user interface with the improved VS16 model which is user friendly and easy to operate. People can easily operate this system, test their hearing condition in the initial stage and be aware about their condition. The proposed uh, approach has achieved a state of art performance compared to the related existing study which may significantly accelerate the achievement of our goal. The further study will be conducted with the more data variance to test the proposed architecture's robustness to make the system more effective in the real-time medical application. Since I joined in University Malaysia Pahang, uh, I published some journal article and the conference paper. Here I mention some of my journal article and the conference paper. This research is supported by Ministry of Higher Education and University Malaysia Pahang, Malaysia with the research grant RDU-090109. In this slide, I mentioned the reference that I use in this presentation slide. Thank you everyone for listening my presentation.